Okay, so I'm an artist and an arts educator. I've known this about myself for a really long time and I feel really grateful that I've acknowledged this so at such a young stage in my life. And so a while ago when I started teaching, a friend of mine asked me to pitch a class for a summer program and I thought to myself, all right, filmmaking, maybe too much equipment, music, maybe too much equipment, storytelling. And she goes, perfect, simple, straightforward, you and the kids. And I go, great, yes, me and some kids, summer school, middle school, two hours a day, four days a week, six weeks, some nice cash, I got this, right? I'm thinking, I can flow with it, I'm an artist, who needs a lesson plan, <laughs> right? Because so I've been teaching for a little while, honestly, in some very kumbaya settings, very bitmappy like that. Uh, <laughs> and so I've just been like flying with it. I'm thinking, you know, I've got some great ideas. The difference between, you know, my previous experiences and what was coming up was that was actually going to be a classroom with chairs and a board and students and me and they close the door and it's just us. Uh, but you know what? I said, you know, I got some great ideas. Storytelling's amazing. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna flow. And pretty much right from the start, failed, tanked, horrible. Why do you know middle school kids? Have you ever <laughs> been around middle school kids in the middle of the summer? It's nothing but hormones. They just wanna fidget and touch each other and just, they, they just could not deal with anything. And I had zero classroom management skills, like nil. And I just, for the life of me, I hate to say this, I could not reel in the boys in the class. I had, of course the girls had their own issues. They were able to channel it, you know, more or less. But the boys, they just ugh, hated being in my class. There was this group of students and they wanted to be, I'll be honest, I was the reject class, all right, whatever, like digital photography was full, so all these kids got funneled into my classroom and they had no clue what to do with themselves or their hormones. And they just could not deal with everything that was happening and they couldn't deal with like wanting to touch the girls and. It was just a huge, giant shit show. And, <laughs> and you know, I'm sitting just trying to like reel everything back in and every time I, I would ask them to do anything, the boys just bulked. They didn't want to write anything. They were just all over the place. Everyone except for one little boy who was just so sweet and so weird and he would sit in the corner and think about life sometimes and like a tear would roll down his cheek. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then when he wasn't doing that, he was writing stories about pizzas or pizzas exploding. It was miraculous. So that kid was wonderful. The rest of it was a shit show. I would give an assignment, which is very loosely based because I didn't have a plan. I would just go, look at stories in our society. We got stories in movies. We got stories. Okay, now you do it. And the kids were like, what? Total, f I had given them no direction. These poor kids were always so confused and floundering. And of course, the boys who didn't want to be there in the first place, they would just argue over who was going to sit in the rolling chair. And I'm like, ah. So because I was failing, I had no clue what to do. I just, I was so fed up and I would start asking them to sit in the hallway. I would send these kids out in the hallway. I was just so frustrated. And this is such a major fail, a complete fail as an educator. When a child is lost, it's because you are doing something wrong. It was my responsibility to guide them back. I had totally, totally, totally failed. So, to their credit, the boys staged a mutiny. <laughs> and I say to them, kudos, you know? Looking back on it, my class was some bullshit. Like, I did not know what I was doing, you know? I was being a complete knucklehead. Who can blame them for being knuckleheads? I was a knucklehead. And so they staged a mutiny and you know something good came out of it because the director of the program had to come in and sort of like mediate between us and it was you know really positive. I mean guess who didn't get asked back the next summer? Hmm? Uh, <laughs> so we ended up working towards this like end of the summer program and everyone was like, oh, we know storytelling's gonna do something amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the kids ended up, you know, kind of putting together something. They sang some songs and, like, you know, played out some fables. At one point, another kid was riding another one like a pony. They looked kind of happy, you know, shades of success. Um, <laughs> overall, I failed. I knew I failed. It's my first time in a classroom. I didn't leave them with any greater understanding of storytelling in our society and how it enriches us and why it's an important way to keep our culture. None of that. But I did learn an extremely important lesson. <laughs> Come in with a plan. <laughs>